All right, welcome back. We are going to continue with the It's Your Experience playbook from the It's Your Career series. And I'm calling this playbook number 3B. And this is episode 6 in this series. So then we're going to get right into it. So again, starting at the top of page 23, and we're getting into the operations research, analysis, and assessment. The Operations Research, OR subspecialty, is a complementary skill set to the traditional supply core lines of operation, with significant opportunity to enhance the performance in any functional area. There is neither a billet nor job within the field of logistics or the Department of Defense where the tools of Operations Research do not find applicability. So then, what is Operations Research? At the most fundamental level, an OR analyst is educated in the application of our problem-solving techniques to real-world problems. The outcome of his or her efforts is the development of decision support tools and procedures that help people and organizations make better choices when facing challenging problems. OR provides the tools to remove the go-with-your-gut sentiment and enables leadership to have a clear understanding of the why one option is more beneficial than another instead of just the what. The major disciplines within OR are all quantitatively intense. Statistics and data analysis, probability and simulation, Optimization and Warfare Analysis, Logistics. And here's a quote from the former chairman, George Chiefs of Staff Analytics from September 2010, Admiral Mike Mullen. One of the great things that the graduate school education in OR taught me was how to think much more critically than I had before and really to frame a problem. Where that really helps me in this job is being able to still frame a problem in my mind and to look at it differently than many of the people who bring those problems to me. Close quote. The military uses OR at the strategic, operational, and tactical levels. As Admiral Mullen states above, OR improves decision-making and facilitates insight into problems, whether that problem be combat fire assignments or budget programming. OR applications cover the full spectrum of military activities from policy analysis to tactical weapon selection. The most basic OR problem is the matching of limited resources to unlimited requirements in a way that will achieve the best outcome for all parties. Some specific areas of focus include force structure composition and modernization, such as the question, should Navy buy new ships or increase investment to lengthen usable ship life? Another area is logistics. How much repair parts inventory is sufficient for a deploying unit? How much airlift do we buy to support an exercise? Third area is human resources. What should our recruiting goals be? How much incentive bonus is needed to influence sailors to stay Navy? How many people do we need for a 313 ship Navy? More flight operation scheduling. Three aircraft, 15 missions, prioritize, execute. Intelligence. What search pattern should be utilized to provide the most imagery from a UAV, unmanned aerial vehicle? And lastly, weapons program management. What will this weapon cost over a 20-year life cycle? What is the operational availability? How does that impact the number of platforms we should buy? Within the supply core, OR practitioners find their skills in great demand at virtually any activity. Specific operation research coded billets exist at OPNAV, in the Assessments Division, Readiness Reporting, Spares Policy, at NASA Headquarters, at NASA Weapon System Support, in Inventory System Modeling, in both fleets, as well as joint opportunities with the Joint Staff, Defense Logistics Agency, United States Transportation Command, and Geographic Combatant Commands. Supply Corps officers interested in an operations research subspecialty must pursue this certification through graduate education at Naval Postgraduate School, Monterey, California. There is complete details on the OR program and curriculum through the Naval Postgraduate School website. Prerequisites for enrollment in the Operations Research Master Program include a bachelor degree with above average grades, completion of mathematics through single variable differential and integral calculus with above average grades is considered minimum preparation. Students without these Quantitative prerequisites will be accepted in cases where their undergraduate records indicate they are exceptional students and there are other indicators of potential. An academic profile code of 325 is required. Waivers may be requested and obtained with a one-quarter refresher. And I've got a quick caveat on that for you personally. So I went to uh, postgraduate school in Monterey with an academic profile code of 123. Lots of science in my background. Had to up through differential equations in Calculus 3. In mathematics, and I didn't make it through the OR program there. It was too way too much, way too quick, and without some probability and statistics already in your background, um, I found it very challenging. 
personally, and I would have rather had been told probability and statistics were a precursor uh, requirement for that program. But feel free to reach out. I know a lot of operations research graduates who, who did fine in the program, and I'm glad to connect you. So reach out to me and let's talk. All right, top of page five, onward. I'm sorry, top of page 25, onward we go. The educational program is an eight-quarter course of study, including joint professional military education, with entry dates in March and September. In general, students attend a one-quarter mathematics refresher prior to entering the curriculum. And note, I did not get that math refresher, and that was my problem. This course sequence begins in January or July for the March or September start dates, respectively. The requirements for the Master of Science and Operations Research degree are met en route to satisfying the educational skill requirements of the curricular program, as well as service intermediate level, professional military education, and Phase 1 joint PME credit. The Military Operations Research Society, MORS, is a professional organization for analysts in Department of Defense and national security-related issues. In addition to their website, www.mores.org, and their quarterly newsletter, Phalanx, the annual Moore Symposium provides a great forum for presentations of the latest analytical efforts from across the community. Outside DOD, the, institution, the Institute for Operations Research and Management Sciences, INFORMS, is the largest professional society in the world for professionals in the field of operations research, management science, and business analytics. INFORMS website, www.informs.org, or www.scienceofbetter.org provide a vast amount of resources for the interested quantitative analyst. The Military Applications Society, MAS, is a technical society within the Institute for Operations Research and the Management Sciences, INFORMS. INFORMS is the Civilian Operations Research Professional Society. Additionally, the Navy Supply Corps has a community group on LinkedIn. The LinkedIn community of consists of active reserve and retired supply corps operations research analysts. You must be a member of LinkedIn to post discussions, little questions, and comments. This forum is an excellent source of information within the community. You can find the Navy Supply Corps Operations Research Group on LinkedIn uh, by clicking on the link on page 25. Joint. The Supply Corps is dedicated to developing and detailing our most qualified officers to joint assignments and are prepared to deliver sustained logistics readiness to the Navy and the Joint Force Commander, JFC. Becoming a Level 3 Joint Qualified Officer, JQO, is a key milestone for Supply Corps officers. Qualification as a Level 3 JQO requires Supply Officers to complete Joint Professional Military Education, Phases 1 and 2, and a Standard Joint Duty Assignment, S-JDA, Tour or Experience Joint Duty Assignment, E-JDA. Joint Qualified Officers were born out of the Goldwater-Nichols Act of 1986. Further direction was, was provided in the John Warner National Defense Authorization Act in 2007, where it stated, quote, The Secretary of Defense shall establish different levels of joint qualification as well as the criteria for qualification at each level. Each level shall, as a minimum, have both joint education criteria and joint experience criteria. The purpose of establishing such qualification levels is to ensure a systematic, progressive, career-long development of officers in joint matters and to ensure that officers serving as general and flag officers, GOFO, have the requisite experience and education to be highly proficient in joint matters, close quote. Based upon the preceding passage, it is clear that joint qualification and experience are extremely important in the development of your career. For the Navy Supply Corps to remain relevant in the future, Supply Corps officers must have the training and experience to operate and excel within the joint environment. In building a successful career, one must consider joint qualification as an important milestone. Joint Milestones Today the current model for joint qualification requires that officers complete JPME on two levels, Phase 1 and Phase 2, and possess joint experience that meets the definition of, quote, joint matters, unquote. Joint matters is codified in the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2007 as follows. Matters related to the achievement of unified action by multiple military forces and operations conducted across domains such as land, sea, air, space, or in the information environment, including matters relating to A. National Military Strategy B. Strategic Planning and Contingency Planning C. Command and Control of Operations under Unified Command D. National Security Planning with Departments and Agencies of the United States and E. Combined Operations with Military Forces of Allied Nations Officer Professional Military Education Policy OPMEP Commander Joint CSI 1800.01 Delta communicates the 
Commander Joint Chiefs of Staff's vision for joint officer development. Joint Qualification System, JQS. The JQS provides active and reserve component officers an opportunity to earn joint qualifications upon completion of the requisite joint professional military education and completion of a full tour of duty in a joint assignment. Joint assignments credit can be awarded via either the standard joint duty assignments list, serving in a joint duty assignment list position, or the experienced joint duty assignment list. An officer may be considered for the awarding of joint experience points for service in the non-JDAL experience position. The JQS officer the JQS offers four levels of joint qualification, level one, level two, level three, also known as joint qualified officer, and level four, to recognize the career-long accumulation of joint knowledge, skills, and abilities. And at the top of page 28, there's a table of levels and the criteria required for each. Standard Joint Duty Assignment, S-JDA. Assignment to a position listed on the JDAL is considered to be the standard path to earn a joint qualification. JDAL positions are detailed based on the screening by the services and the joint organizations. Generally, officers serving in a JDAL position are 04 and above. JDAL billets require three year commitment with few exceptions. All JDAL billets, except URLs and GOFOs, have a tour length of three years and limits the number of officers that the supply corps can move through these JDAL billets. Except for assignments terminated by joint duty tour length, waivers for one or for one of the reasons listed in Closure 7 of DODI 1300.19, active component and full-time reserve component officers in figures 06 and below must complete at least three years of GOFOs and must complete at least two years in order to earn full joint credit. The tour length for reserve component officers who perform duty periodically in a JDAL position is set at six cumulative years for 06 and below, initial assignment not less than three years, and four cumulative years for GOFOs, initial assignment not less than two years. Those are general officers, flag officers again. DODI 1300.19 Enclosure 13 details the Reserve Component Joint Qualification Program. A tour of duty in which an officer serves in more than one joint duty assignment without a break between such assignments shall be considered to be a single tour of duty and a joint duty assignment. The current JDAL is available through hyperlink at the top of page 29. As of September 2010, Officers in the grades of 01 through 06 may self-nominate their experiences and request award of joint experience points. This process is available via hyperlink on page 29. The current global environment has placed supply corps officers in high demand. Individual Augmentee Manpower Management, IAMM, and Global War on Terrorism, GWAT Support Assignments, GSA, programs are just two of the many requirements supply corps officers are summoned to support. It should be noted that joint experience points for these I assignments can be credited up to a ratio of three for one. That is three months credit for one month served. And side note here, I, I conducted both a global support assignment and an individual augmentee. And I know that those aren't as common these days as they were back when I was a GO, but feel free to reach out to me if you want to learn more. It is important to emphasize that serving in a joint command does not automatically qualify as joint duty experience. Moreover, serving in a naval command may qualify for joint duty experience. Upon submission of the officer's EJDA self-nomination, a JQS experience review panel with representatives from all services and components will evaluate whether the duties assigned qualify as joint matters. If those experiences meet the definition of joint matters, a recommendation will be submitted to the Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff for approval or disapproval of the individual experience. The key to a successful self-nominating process is ensuring that the position description and the fitness reports communicate a substantive effort in joint matters. Conclusion the Supply Corps community values billets in joint organizations because they allow Supply Corps officers to be more relevant to logistics elements supporting the Joint Forces Command. Such experience and opportunity will allow our best officers to compete for flag and logistics related leadership roles across the joint environment. Developing and assigning officers prepared to deliver logistics readiness across the joint environment depends on career milestone achievements. Relevance across the joint environment is essential to the Supply Corps and the Navy and is central to the mission of the Supply Corps. And there's a handful of references that they list here. DODI 1300.19, CJCSI 1330.05 Joint Officer Management Program, DOD Joint Officer Management Program Fact Sheet, and the NPC Joint Officer Management PERS 45J website. Uplog, JOL, Joint Operational Logistics Internships. 
All joint operational logistics billets are assigned to the Joint Staff Logistics Director at J4. Each GOL intern shall be given the opportunity to experience the many aspects of joint logistics and gain a broad knowledge base as well as developing strong managerial skills. The goal of this program is to develop individuals with a broad working knowledge of joint operational logistics so they will be able to make fundamentally sound management decisions in the future. In addition to on-the-job development, the GOL Internship Educational Program includes Naval War College Correspondence Program for JPME Phase 1, as well as numerous joint and operational logistics-oriented training courses. Upon completion of training, officers will have gained a significant level of experience in joint operational logistics. Officers completing the OPLOG GOL program will earn the 3212 Sierra Operational Logistics Subspecialty Code and JPME Phase 1 AQD of Juliet Sierra 7. To be assigned to the GOL intern program, officers must possess a top-secret security clearance. Additional information on joint officer management is available on the Supply Corps homepage. All right, that's going to do it. We just closed out page 30 of the It's Your Experience playbook. On um, page 31 and 32, there is a Notional Supply Corps career progression timeline from ensign to flag officer with tours um, available for you at those ranks, as well as promotion milestones that you'll want to try to hit. Um, key career events are highlighted in red in the right-hand column. And then on page 32, there's a Supply Corps officer personal career plan that lets you pencil in tours planned and completed. Uh, happy to have those discussions with you in detail. They kind of scratch over it there with those last two tools. Um, but there's a lot there's a lot more that goes into that, and I'm actually putting together a, a YouTube series uh, to dive into to much deeper detail as it impacts not only you and your career, but your Armed Forces family as well. So I appreciate you joining me. Thanks so much again for being here and hanging out. Let me know what else you want so we can take care of you. To your liberty. Heck yeah.